Spoiler alert! Hey. There's no big announcement. Well, it's, it's clearly titled No Big Announcement. Yeah, but it could be some sort of secret ploy where it's like there's actually a big announcement. There is no big announcement. There was no clickbait used <laughs> in the creation of this title. Yeah. We're just uh, hiding from the sun in our greenhouse. We gotta throw a tarp up on the side because it was like burning us. It's actually like pretty pleasant in here mm -hmm. right now. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. So we had nothing to do, which isn't true. There's obviously an infinite number of things we could be doing yeah. right now, but we had nothing we have to do. So we figured, why don't we do a live video? Yep. Take a break. Take a break. Sit in a chair. Sitting is nice. <laughs> I can get used to it. Well, don't get used to it. <clears throat> right. So what have we been up to, Ian? Well, we think we made our sales goal. Well, we definitely have. We just don't have a... Not our sales goal. Not a sales goal, but a sales milestone, which is uh, if you sell $10,000, you get qualified for farm status. And it's not just like it happens one year and then you're good. You have to do it every single year. So this year we crossed our 10000 in gross sales already. So. Yay! Yep. It really, we, we are still officially a farm. Yeah, Yay. still officially a farm, still officially farmers. <laughs> <laughs> it was just fun because like last year, we weren't sure uh, how long it would take us to get to that. And it was kind of like late August before yeah, we made beginning that. beginning of September. Yeah. And I think next year we'll sell over 10,000 at our nursery sale. Potentially, if we have the heated green, greenhouse. If we have the heated greenhouse, know. then yeah. Well, considering we yep. don't have a farm stand yet. I'm going to say that we are not going to have a yeah. heated greenhouse. Hey, there's anytime. an announcement. We're not going to have a farm stand for this summer selling season. That was like, you know, a big plan. And it seemed like we were going to like do it. But now we've got the market schedule going. and the... I will say this, though. Like, we need to get working on the farm stand. Like, right away. In the fall, yeah. No, like... Oh, as soon as we can. Yeah, like yeah. next week. Okay. Ian has to finish his irrigation. Yep. Which he's had a month to do. So there's no reason that he shouldn't be done it yet. So a week. Okay. And then and then we'll All start these... on the farm stand. <laughs> but considering the irrigation, which we were like, oh yeah, it'll take like... We'll have it done. It'll be like a week. It's we not... said we that has now taken like a month and a half. Yeah. I'm like no longer telling anyone that we're gonna have that we're gonna have um, a farm stand because yeah we well aren't. for one thing the uh, the way that we have it set up in the carport is actually pretty good and we are getting some like regular customers to come and just shop out of the carport yeah the nice thing about the carport is there's no theft risk yeah in the carport. It's like anyone who's gonna like drive in is is like they're not gonna smash up our stainless steel table and run away yeah like it's just it's too much right it's like literally in our house and our door is always open but so. our neighbors tell us that if they put like their eggs out for sale on the road that they kind of expect 25 percent loss to theft so it's like a substantial thing for a high value item like eggs you know we don't think it'll be as much of a problem for like a bag of lettuce. Yeah, we're not too worried. Because if someone steals a bag of lettuce, you know. There's another bag of lettuce yeah. coming <laughs> <There's>... in right <laughs> behind it. <laughs> okay, I saw two questions. Let's answer that quickly. Um, so farm status gives us a different tax setup. Yeah. Um, so it means we get ta Basically, it means our property doesn't get taxed. Only our where the buildings. Um, buildings get taxed. And so it... it did like a major reduction in our taxes for yeah. this year. It was like $3,000 around that, that it saved us in that. And then there's a lot of businesses around that deal with farms that want to see you have farm status to get yeah, into. Yeah, there's like, like other like discounts and things that and, you can get for being an actual farmer. Yeah, and then our water uh, is a lot cheaper. Yeah, yeah. I, 
we've heard that our water gets ta gets a different rate, but we haven't had a water bill yet. So we only we get like we don't know once every three months water bills. The last water bill that we got said that we had like a seven hundred dollar credit or something. Yeah. So I was like, maybe that has like they back like yeah. gave us money or I don't know. We could, our, our, we are like at that point of the year, like last year, we could have been so unorganized. We could have double paid the bill. Yeah. Like who knows? <laughs> We'll find out. <laughs> We're not too worried. Okay, and the other question that I saw a while back was, uh, if someone wants to start a farm, my advice, and that is go work on a farm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we, we didn't do that, but we've, we'll say it every single time we give any advice on this channel. Uh, do what we say, don't do what we do, <laughs> because what we do isn't very smart. But yeah, go have some- we, we had a lot of, like, we'd been on a lot of urban farms before. Not not working though, yeah. but we had some experience. I would say that we have some financial privilege that allows us to make bad decisions. Yeah, like not going and working on someone else's farm. Like we we're like the thing about going and working on someone else's farm is you can get paid to learn how to farm. Yeah, like and, that's that's what we're currently doing. And it'll help you just understand what you need, what you don't, like and what the customers are looking for and stuff like that kind of experience you know last year was just a total learning experience for us and this year feels completely different having that you know just one summer even under our belts and so i think anyone who is starting they they need to see that so they know where to put their money and where to put their effort and uh, to be able to do it without having to worry about like you know money because you're starting your farm it's it's like you got to buy this you got to buy that you got to buy a hundred of those you got to be by like 500 of those you know the everything just starts adding up and if you're not like knowing exactly where you need to put that money then you could get yourself in a problem where like you don't have cash and now all of a sudden you're looking to sell that thing that you just bought but you have to sell it at like the the flash sale price which is pennies to the dollar right yeah so the, the smart way to do it is to like go work on someone else's farm, get paid. Yeah, totally. And you're going to need every penny you need. Like farms are like crazy expensive. So, you know, go work for a few years, save the money and, and you'll be, you'll have more money <laughs> for when you actually start, start your farm. And it, you'll be trained, you'll know what you like and you know what you don't like. Yeah. And that's, that's huge. It, it's not like working for somebody for a year on their farm is going to put your farm like behind. Yeah, it, it'll totally. it'll put your future like advancing faster. Yeah, it means that you'll be able to make smart, profitable decisions quicker than if you had no experience. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh stuff we wish we could grow in Kelowna in Kelowna well stuff that we used to grow in Victoria like what like a big rosemary oh bush. yeah I guess it would be nice to have rosemary <laughs> that would be <laughs> and you like know, artichokes there's yeah, some fun stuff. I mean we're we're pretty lucky in Kelowna it's it's pretty hard to complain yeah um because we do, we have these hot summers, so we can actually grow tomatoes, you know, and then we get some cold in the winter, but it's not, excuse me, it's not super, super cold. But it's cold enough to, like, control yeah, it's cold enough pest to kill populations. And, as to why we can't grow yeah. rosemary. Yeah, like minus 20 Celsius. Yeah, would be... we're like a zone, we're an American zone 5 or a Canadian zone 6. Yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of stuff that we would like, you know, like citrus, citrus would be amazing. You know, you see all those like California farms and then like all the stuff, they grow there's all these like beautiful crazy lush things, things yeah, over the summer, you know, but then I see like Florida farms and they're literally growing on sand, like literal, like white sand beach is their farm. And I'm like, okay, no, yeah. no complaints. Like we, yeah. we're pretty lucky. Yeah. Like we're still going to get a massive amount of, you know, tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, 
you know, we can grow things that need the, the hot climate, but, you know, we just had a big flush of all the, the greens, you know, like our lettuces and our kales and stuff. They were all growing really well. And so we, we kind of have, we do have like some variation in our season, but we never get that like summer just goes on forever type crops and you know it'd be fun to grow those but if we grew those we'd have other challenges yeah, we'd have other issues and we we Kelowna is such a nice growing region that uh we're able to handle this big farm with the two of us so far and it's not like you know the insects are overwhelming us yet yeah there's there's another question all right so <laughs> we answered that we could go on forever about how much which, we which love growing here. Um, so do we have any hired help? Yeah. And the answer to that is no. But this year we do have someone who's coming and helping us out. Yeah. For like three or four hours, like once or twice a week, which is like hugely helpful when she comes. Like we get so much done. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, you know, yeah. she's on it. Yeah. The other day she was like, do I even help you? And I'm like yes like <laughs> you just did all this like by yourself and she's like oh okay yeah yeah and uh you know, we have a few other people who who pop by yeah to drop give us by a hand. And help with weeding sometimes and stuff like that but for the most part it's like... it's a hard balance so we can't afford to hire anyone to help us we yeah. just there's there's no money yeah yeah, we make no money. So any money that we'd spend on labor would be, you know, we don't even know where to send someone to make us more money. So it's it's not like, oh, if we had someone, we could make more money. Um, so we're, you know, we kind of, we need to build our sales and we need yeah. to build, um, we need to build, what am I trying to say? being distracted by reading and talking customer at the base. same time yeah we need to build our sales we need to build our customers here on the farm you know we need to be have more places to sell stuff before we start being able to afford to hire someone yeah um and then we you know if people want to come by and help us out we are we're cautiously open to that yeah um because it's it's hard to know like what someone's going to be able to do you you think of something like oh weeding anyone can weed you just like send them out there and weed but weeding's actually like kind of a skilled labor because you need to know what's a weed and what isn't a weed and you yeah. like you also need to know like oh this weed has to be pulled this weed can just be cut off with like a hoe um so it it's yeah. hard to know what you can send someone to do without any any observation and you know it could go really bad you could send someone to oh go eat the carrots and then you no longer have a carrot bed because they pulled out all the baby carrots yeah and so someone i i like it's hard to read and talk but i saw someone asking about the social media and the instagram is mine yeah in, in terms basically are what we're talking about about like it's like they're not necessarily they take more time than they save time yeah potentially so, right potentially you need you need time to like train people and then if somebody's coming back all the time then you they get the feeling for it and then they can actually be productive but if it's like someone just drops by for an afternoon to help out then you end up doing some like low priority weeding somewhere simple where they can't screw it up yeah and it takes you just as long to do it because you're talking and you know like meeting each other which is fine like yeah which we it's a like social thing yeah but it's it's doesn't necessarily lead to to high value like labor for us now right now we're we're kind of grossing like one to one and a half thousand dollars a week on this and i think that we could probably get in the like four thousand a week range yeah during... that's the goal the goal is we need yeah. to be able to because we want to be able to gross a hundred thousand a year, we figure our growing season is like an easy twenty-five, you know, up to thirty weeks. Yeah. So to gross the hundred thousand, we'd have to do four K for twenty-five weeks. So. That's our goal. That's the goal. Yeah. But that <coughs> that would involve having an employee. Yeah. 
like to do that at that point in time because there'll be like probably a couple markets and those are two days right there on on their own and and then like all the harvest for it and stuff like hundred thousand in vegetables that's a lot of harvesting yeah, totally because when what i've been sending to the market my goal is always to send a thousand dollars because what how much you can make at the market is dependent on what you send like if i only send ian with a hundred dollars the most he can possibly sell is a hundred dollars um so i i try to always send a thousand um which is hard early in the in the spring instead of the summer <clears throat> but but yeah to get to get four thousand like i need someone to help me harvest yeah sometimes i get i get bogged down thinking about the future and i'm like oh my god there's gonna be a point where it's just there's so much harvesting like to sell that much and then there's gonna be so much vegetable cleaning and so much like washing totes yeah totally the efficiencies really need to be there to be Basi able to survive like to harvest more than like 2000 we'd need to have a walk-in cooler because yeah. you just you, you can't couldn't do it, do in, it a in a day yeah. right so you need to like be like oh i went out on thursday and i harvested two thousand dollars and went into the walk-in cooler and then i went out on friday and i harvested two thousand dollars and then went into the walk-in cooler and then ian goes off to the farmer's market and i stayed home and i harvested another two thousand dollars so that we could have another farmer's market on sunday like we just we need to keep building our infrastructure mm -hmm. but something good that's been happening is uh we've been selling well out of our carport oh yeah the so what i saw a question and it was asking if we considered doing a csa um and what we're and, considering and we're, so, we're doing a no commitment csa is yeah what we're so kind of thinking we've been having this. a lot of success with the carport which is why which kind of goes back to the CSA, which is, no, we don't want to do the CSA because I'll let Ian explain well, we, we what don't, we are doing. Yeah, so we don't like driving. We don't want to do a CSA. We don't want to do delivery. We don't want to work out schedules. But uh, we're making just like a, a weekly $20 veggie box and then Serena like loads them up in the fridge and then there's a bunch of other like loose stuff in the fridge as well, like salad mix or kales, kind of like sitting in, in little displays with prices. And... You can just grab the bag and then, you know, you've already got this assortment of vegetables, some which you're probably more familiar with and others which you may not frequently eat, but are, you know, like what's in season for us right now. And we're getting, and the bags are like pretty good value, but. Yeah, I usually have like 25 to 28. Yeah. So it's like, it's like a heaping bag of, of vegetables, but then it allows us to get that like. $20 off a customer. You know, when I'm at the, the farmer's market, a lot of the sales are like $3, $5, $8, like below $10. And you just max out in how many people you can talk to, to be able to get like a high enough uh, final number that, that that's, you know, where you want to be, right? If you can get a $20 bill from someone and they're happy because they've got this like mountain of vegetables, and we're happy because, you know, it's actually like a number that adds up to something and you can do that all in one transaction. Well, that, that's great. And people have been buying these bags and, you know, maybe it's kind of like a, maybe a dozen people and they're just like some of them are coming more regularly and then a new one kind of gets added here and there. But people are embracing it and, and coming back for more. And we're definitely get, we're, we're getting word of mouth. Yeah. Like people are like, oh, my friend said I, I saw what my friend had. Yeah. Yeah. And the bags are also partially because of our space setup. Um, they fit inside, like the bags fit inside the fridge um, because we're limited for fridge space. And there's only so many things um, we can keep unrefrigerated. We'll yeah. have more coming into the summer. Like tomatoes will be unrefrigerated. Flowers yeah. are unrefrigerated. So we'll be able to have more stuff out other than just the the bags would just make it easier yeah and and people are buying not just the bags but then they'll buy you know a couple of things of the salad mix or something like that so you know thirty dollar sales haven't been uncommon you know the other day I, I was i had three sales that i dealt with and the total was like almost seventy dollars between just those three and it was like that's a that's a short enough 
amount of labor for like customer interaction that I still have time to do other stuff. You know, if, if I was at a market, it might take me standing at the market stand for, you know, 40 minutes or something like that to sell $60 worth of product. But it was just like, it's, it's promising to see that people are willing to spend. Yeah. And here. like Ian was hanging around the house, like he was in the house. Yeah. So he saw, like heard the people come up, but I've been like, I like every time I walk past the fridge, I check to see if anything's missing. Cause I want to keep the bags in there, but I'll like, like, I'll be like, Oh, I was like, went and like fed the chickens and I'll like come back and there's like, like the jars full of cash. And it's like, like I keep being like all of our customers must drive like electric cars. Cause I don't, I don't hear them pull in, but it so it feels like magic. It's just like, we put things into this fridge and it disappears yeah. and money shows up. We're, we're like the first time someone comes, we do make an effort to kind of show them around the farm and to explain the system very well. But then some people, once they get that, they've been coming back and they're just like, I know what to do. Got my money, dropping it off. Yeah. Grabbing my veggies. Which is, part, later. which is like part of like, we were kind of, that's, and going back to the CSA thing, the, the whole point of these $20 bags is that they are convenient for customers. It's like, they can just, Oh, I'm going to the grocery store but I don't have to worry about getting any produce because on the way home from the grocery store, I'm just going to pull into Serena and Ian's driveway and grab a $20 grocery bag of produce. Yeah. It's, it's like supposed to be convenient for them. Um, and then we don't have to do any of that commitment on f from us. There's no commitment that we've guaranteed that there will be bags for 20 mm. weeks. Like you have to do for it, CSA also... and there's no commitment for the customers. Like if they go on vacation, they don't have to worry about oh what are they going to do with that week's yeah. that week's thing we've also been uh getting like over 20 eggs a day right now so we started selling our eggs through that fridge as well and that's been like pretty easy so far yeah i mean we've only sold two and there's two currently in there <laughs> so i guess i thought we we've... sold some more before that unless i don't know i, I think checked. we sold some more before that no there i haven't restocked it yet anyways there is eggs. If you're local, yep. there's eggs right now. Okay, so let's talk about infrastructure because yep. people are asking different infrastructure things um, and, and about like just time constraints. Yeah. Um, but another uh, quite like topic to kind of answer a cluster of questions there is to, okay, first like going way, way back, someone was asking about the social media. So usually if you want to contact us to talk to us, um, I'm on Instagram all the time and unless I'm like swamped, <laughs> I'll like, I can, I'll usually get back to you. Um, but yeah, so if you ever, if you ever want to chat, yeah. I'm over there on Instagram. We're on Facebook too. And then, yeah, and Facebook and sometimes Facebook messes up. So if you don't hear from us, yeah. just shoot us. Facebook is glitchy. Um, and then Ian and I both edit videos. We, you know, if, yeah, yeah. if I'm busy, Ian will edit or you know, the other night, like he... you can try to figure out who's, who's made which one. <laughs> we definitely have styles. Yeah. We definitely have styles. Like I finished the, the food bank video. So there's absolutely zero subtitle, like yeah. descriptions of what's going on. Cause Ian does that. He drives <laughs> me crazy and I hate it when he does that. <laughs> I like, I like it as a way to explain context. Some clips need context, but okay. So, but this is okay so we don't have comments on the youtube channel and the reason is because um youtube has turned off comments for our channel um so we sometimes they're on for the first two hours of a video yeah. <laughs> and we're like yay and then and then it's deleted and everything everybody says has been deleted yeah or like the we had two random videos but, and, and they've got video or they got comments on them yeah and it's it, oh no no okay so it's like i see like you can't fix it we've talked it's, to, it's not it's not that we we've tried the things we we've done all the things it's that we've talked to youtube in the back and somewhere on youtube this is our guess we guess that we've been categorized as a children's channel so if if there's channels being with children then there are no comments because youtube comments are horrible and no one should no children should have to deal with them we 100 percent support that yeah um but we think we've just been miscategorized they're like oh this is a 
a, a gardening knowledge children's channel. Yeah. So until I don't like I don't even know. Like we've we've basically given up on them ever coming back. Me like maybe, maybe some in the long long from now who yeah. knows. Um, but yeah, so we love hearing from you guys. So definitely uh, hit us up on the social media. But also because we think that maybe it has something to do with kids, we also try our hardest <laughs> to make sure that our kids aren't in our videos. Yeah. Because we don't want to add any extra reasons. Um, yeah, like for... we, we took old videos down that had the kids in them and stuff and like... We, yeah, we, we really, like, we try to we keep them to out of the, the background, the... you know, like we, we set the, them up with like snacks and television right now so that, you know, we can do this without them coming in. Um, it's just, you know, it is, it is what it is. Yeah. There's no, honestly, there's we, we no, almost there's no reason. doing YouTube because of it. Yeah, it was, it was pretty discouraging because yeah. we, we love chatting with everyone. Um, which is why we we like doing the live videos when when we can find some time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and then so that kind of answers some like s some stuff that I'm seeing, and then a thing that people uh, people are always like, oh, you should do this, like oh, like you should set up like this thing. Someone was like, oh, like well, how expensive is like a cool bot system? Um, yeah, and we, and we, we it's like zero. We, it's it's sitting in. <laughs> The garage. The problem is time. And, you know, when we say Serena and I work together on the farm, it's kind of a, you know, that's that's a little bit misleading because one of us always basically is getting uh, control of the kids. And, every, you know, everybody who's parent knows how it is. It's like, you know, yes, maybe you can still make progress on your task while you're dealing with your two young kids, but it's going to be at a greatly reduced rate, right? And then, so what we try to do is we try to switch off. One person has you know, control of the kids, they're making them food, they're, you know, dealing with the the freakouts, and the other person is just focusing on whatever that they have to do that day. And then, you know, the it keeps flipping back and forth between who needs to work and who needs to watch the kids. And and that's like a big limiting factor. And then I'm gone one day of the week for market. So Saturday, you know, Serena's kind of just recovering. I'm away all day. Yeah, Saturday is my. Like, and then I get home and day. I'm tired because I I had a long day as well. Friday she's harvesting, so I'm watching the kids and doing harvest stuff. Thursday afternoon we usually start prepping for market by trying yeah, I start to, harvesting Thursday. Trying afternoon. to, so that kind of leaves like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to get stuff done. But I have more to do than just harvesting because I do the majority of the the farm yeah. labor. Ian does like the physical labor. Um, but Ian really can't bend over <laughs> yeah. and pretty much everything farming involves bending over. Um, so we, uh, so yeah, so once we get to this time of year, there's just, there's so many things to do <laughs> yeah. that it means we just don't have the time for these infrastructure projects. And so we that basically so end up just putting out fires through which which is why we're like well we're not going to tell anyone the farm stand's going to get done because who knows who knows yeah. when we'll be able to find time for it it happened like that last year where we were just like banging thing after thing after thing until like june and then as soon as our first market hit like that was, it was just like stop <laughs> you know like nothing else is happening you're just like harvesting and selling and busy with just plant stuff for the rest of the year and it was like that till the end. And then it was like, okay, go again. You know, like October hits, it's like, go, you can do stuff again. And it was like, whoa, where, what just happened, man? Like, where are we? That was a crazy trip. <laughs> yeah. We were like just exhausted. And then we also, Ian works away in the winter. Yeah. Ian like works out of town. So I think, I think that there was actually some early work. Yeah. You no, went I, was, early. I went, I was gone at Halloween. And I was gone in November. Oh, really? Not for work, but I went out to prep oh, the machine. Okay. And then... Uh, yeah, so if, if Ian's gone, then nothing gets done. Because then it's like... Yeah. Then I'm just full, She's full-time full kids. kids and yeah. there's, there's like some basic things that'll get done. 
but it's just basically yeah, like seed simple, starter. Simple. <laughs> I upbeat. I can I can get tomatoes started yeah. without Ian, and and I can get some videos out without Ian. Me going away to work is part of the the like financial freedom that we have in that, like I can make a wage while I'm gone in the winter time, and then we can come back, and then once once the farm business has enough, uh, like money coming through it, then, you know, we can start backing off me going away, if, which we're talking about taking a, a winter off this year where I just stay home and we try to get caught up on all the infrastructure and really excited about that. Cause we're talking about like renoing the inside of the, the outbuilding, oh, that'd be... which would be like, 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 so in our most recent video, for the food bank um a lot of that is filmed inside of we have like a 2000 square foot building and half of it is not finished because it's like plywood or osb or whatever but it's like a but one it's, bedroom apartment. it's almost like a one bedroom apartment it has a bathroom which is where i do all the seedlings it has like a bedroom and then it has this big open space that has like a kitchen kind of in it um and we've we've talked about you know what an amazing resource that is where we could potentially put in a commercial kitchen if we needed to um or the one thing i'm super excited about is maybe being able to do events in the space yeah. um you know, i think like, i think it's a can't miss like opportunity we we run on that it's a it's a the main room is quite a large space like you could comfortably host an event with like a dozen people yeah in there we're like all working together mm -hmm. yeah um it's just it needs needs some work before we can do that yeah and and so we put that work in and and then we've got something kind of cool that we can use there and yeah. uh and we can get that farm stand built yeah get the <laughs> farm stand built so <laughs> we next... can build the walking cooler the walking cooler has to it yeah. has to happen the walking cooler took up big kind of like change i know we this, we this, were talking because we have a, a about a 1100 square foot shop space and that shop space is like super important to us we use it and we have like a hundred percent of the floor space taken up at times and we we foresee it being like a major work focal work point for like the life of this farm right and every square foot is important and we were going to build uh the walk-in cooler inside of it and then yeah we even like we have a it like a plug wired yeah for the yeah for the, but then like, i realized because i like work in there all the time and i was like i don't want to stand beside the like compressor of an air conditioner while I'm like working in this yeah. like cement echo room. I'm like, oh, it would be so unpleasant. But we don't have any other spots in that building where, because we have like 100% sun all day, every day. Um, so we need a spot where the air conditioner could sit that would be like protected from the sun. Yeah. And we just were really limited. So we that. were, we were like sketching where we were going to put it into the, into the shop and we're like this is going to take up a lot of the shop's function and and then we're like what if we just get uh like a trailer an enclosed trailer and turn it into like our little portable like walk-in cooler space and then then we can like move yeah, it around the all, yard we've also been running out of space for what we can bring down to the farmer's market yeah and we're trying to think long term and we're like, oh, we probably would max out on two thousand dollars. Is the most we could actually pack into one vehicle. Yeah, into my like truck, which would be packed tight with two thousand dollars. That'd be a lot. It's already kind of like pushing the limits. Yeah. So, but if we had this trailer, then we could just—it's already re like cooled. We just like hook it up and go. Yeah. And then also we've talked about it would maybe be nice instead of doing something really large. I mean, it'd still be large. It's still like a walk-in. It's like a room. Refrigerator is what we're talking about. But I think we'd rather have two than to have one that's just massive. Because then we can we can turn on only one. We can have different temperatures. Like if we had, oh, we, we don't need both of them. We could turn down the temperature on one to have flowers be stored. Because they need to be at a different temperature than vegetables. Yeah. You know, it, it has... It, it's more expensive, but there's also 
increased function in having two. <coughs> You're Sorry. talking too much. <laughs> I know. I was at <coughs> I was at the market uh, two weeks ago, and I was snacking on a carrot because like the carrots are really good, and it just like stuck in the back of my throat, and then I got swarmed with all these customers. And I had to just like have a cough, but I couldn't, right? Because you can't cough when you're in yeah, public you're not anymore. I have, I can't go to <laughs> I can't go to the farmers market because I I have like this I'm allergic to something. It's been making me cough every once in a while, and we'll like we'll be kicked out of the market if I go and cough there. <laughs> so I was like, I was trying to talk to people, and I was losing my voice, and my face went red, and my eyes were watering, and I just could I had this like piece of carrot in the back of my throat. And I tried to like take a sip of water and I tried to like <laughs> go to the back of the market stand and kind of like be like, oh, <laughs> but I couldn't. And and then people just kept coming and coming and I was like trying to like sign language them a little bit. And eventually I just, I couldn't do it. I had to. That's when you like run away. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> you're like, go stand somewhere else in the market where no one will judge you. Yeah. It was the worst. If, if like go was, to the, run to the, out to the bathrooms. And if like, at the start, fit in the bathroom. if at the start I had just been like, <clears throat> then I probably would have been fine. But I, I like tried not to do that. And then it got like a hundred times worse. Okay. So see people talking about the Amazon link. That's just Amazon. And then we get commission. Yeah, I think that's how that works. But I also don't know. That was, that's like a million years old. Yeah. I haven't I haven't actually looked at any of our links in a long time. <laughs> um, people were. Let's talk about this one and then animals. Yeah, because that's another questions. Okay, so people were talking about the hot. How do we work? How do we work in the heat? And um, you'll see that we're like we're always wearing long sleeves. Yeah. People are like, wow, it must not be that warm in Canada. <laughs> and and we always have our big hats. And um, so we we do that because of sun. Like, it's, it's like, super important for us to stay covered. We're, like, yelling at our children all day, every day. We're yeah. like, go oh, put your hat on! Put your clothes on! <laughs> stay in the trade! Um, yeah, so we we do everything possible that we can to keep ourselves covered up. Um, and then Kelowna is hot. We get like a hundred here. Yeah. Um, but it's dry where we have like, as soon as you're in the shade, it's, it's like, oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. So even, even when it's like full sun, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not too bad. And then you just, you have to stay yeah. hydrated, but, um, I'm going to catch a fatty, but definitely we, we also, we like the heat. Um, we definitely could not do this if we were not the type of people who like being out in the sun. Um, and also I couldn't do it if I didn't have an air conditioner in our bedroom <laughs> because I, I need to like cool down at the end of the day. Like I, like I can do it all day, but then I have to, <laughs> then I have to cool down. Mr. Fatty. Yeah. Our big boy. Yes, this poor man, this poor man, our big fat cat, all he wants is cuddles all day, every day, but no one has time to cuddle him. And he, then he's not allowed in the house because he's, he's mean to our other cat. He like came with the property here. He, uh, they were like, oh, we have these barn cats and they just like, they stay in the barn. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're, <coughs> He's, he's, <coughs> he's 19 pounds last time I weighed him. <coughs> yeah, they were like, oh, he's an old man. So like, you know, we just, we don't want to disrupt him from like his home. And so like the second we moved in, he's like at the door, like, meow, meow. <laughs> <laughs> so we figure either he like didn't like the owners. He was like, yeah, don't like those people. Or I don't know. I mean. But yeah, so he's he's a nice guy who likes to fight with other cats. So he has to live in his own in his very own house, which I don't feel bad for him for. But he needs like a little old lady to own him. Yeah, just because all he wants is to like sit on your lap and get pet for like ten hours a day. There's no end. Yeah. There's no like oh well that was good. Well, maybe we should do this again sometime. It's just like straight up all day. Poor fatty. 
A poor kitten. Okay, so animals. People are wondering if we're going to get animals. Well, we did. We got chickens. <laughs> and we want to get <coughs> ducks. I think <coughs> Indian runner ducks are adorable. And, you know, the chickens don't really eat the slugs and the snails and stuff like that. But we don't really have slugs and snails. We do. We have some. We don't get a lot of damage I was... from them. Ian was like, let's get Indian runner ducks. And I was like, do it. <laughs> and then he couldn't find them. Yeah. And so now it was too late. Now I'm, now I'm like, no. Now I've thought about it. And I'm like, no, we're not. We're not going to do that. Too much work. And everything is too much work is basically the story of animals here is every single thing that we add to the farm takes more time. And we have no time. Yeah. So if like so we have the chickens for eggs right now. Um and I'm willing to get the chickens for eggs because the they're in an area that we don't have anything growing. Um but having just this big empty field means that there's tons and tons of bugs there. And so we get a lot of bug pressure from the empty space in the in the yard. So by putting chickens in there in theory, like they haven't done this yet. <laughs> Um, but in theory, they'd help keep the bugs down because they'd run around and they'd eat all the bugs. Um, they're not currently doing that, which is why I was like, yeah, go get me some ducks. These chickens suck. Yeah. But apparently they're going to they're going to um, do more of that as they age because they're still, you know, they just started laying. Yeah, we got um, them as pullets, but that was like only yeah. a month and a half ago. They've only been laying for like a couple weeks. So they're like, you know, they're still really young. Um, and we have 30, um, so where I'm at with animals is we still have some space in the chicken coop. Yeah. Like there's, it makes, there's more, it makes sense roost. to get more chickens. Yeah. So I think that we could probably add another 30 chickens to, without having to build any more infrastructure. Um, and then that would, that would make it so that, <clears throat> oh. there'd be more of them, which means that they'd have to take more more space out in the yard, the which means careful for him. Okay. Um, which means that they'd eat more bugs, which is what I want them for. Um, but if we were to add meat chickens, um, that's just, it's an extra level of like complication, right now. Now it's like, okay, we have to treat them differently than egg chickens. And you know, they didn't need a different amount of knowledge. It's like, Oh, there's something wrong with them. We need to like, spend the time and learn about that and then we also need to like have the time to butcher them um so and there's just no time and there's no time so the solution is we just eat eggs now <laughs> we, do, we don't even need meat we just have yeah freezer room yeah so like another another issue that we have for infrastructure i was i was complaining to ian about this the other day <coughs> um and uh, so we're, we're out of, we're out of space for like, so we have three freezers and we have three fridges here. Um, and we need more refrigeration space, but our house is so old that we probably don't have enough like electrical capacity to add much more than what we're already using because they're actually pretty large draws um so before like rather i couldn't just like get an extra freezer to hold a batch of meat chickens because that could be like the freezer that takes us over the limit <laughs> and like explodes our electrical panel it wouldn't actually but we do have breakers we're not <laughs> the electrical's not that old um but yeah, it's we we're we we can't just buy more fridges and plug them in because we're out of plugins that can run fridges. Um, yeah, when we originally bought the property, like I love goats. I think goats are the best. They're they're my spirit animal because they're hilarious. And I was like, oh, could you imagine if we could like have have some goats and have like milk goats? That'd be like so amazing. <clears throat> um, but uh, then once we got here and we started doing the vegetables, it's like, you know, it, it all comes down to 
would I rather have like that and get rid of like tomatoes or would I rather just like have more tomatoes? And the answer is I always, I always want more of the vegetables. So, you know, I'll get distracted like by Ian being like, oh my God, Indian runner ducks. I found someone who sells them and I'll be like, yeah, let's do it. But then we'll end up with stuff like the trees, like our fruit trees that we planted, which is like the lesson of like not doing that. Yep. Okay, tell the tell the fruit tree story. Well, when we first that was one of the first things we did when we, we got here is we bought a bunch of fruit trees and we planted them. Yes, because like, because what's the, best, the first thing the best time to plant a fruit tree is twenty years ago. The second best time to plant a fruit tree is now. Yeah. So, so we're like now. Yeah, we, we we love fruit. And then we like started realizing that they're a lot of work and we gotta like prune them and they're kind of in the way they don't really fit with the plan and we had to and like what, we, we what are we gonna spray do spray them what are we gonna do like you know time. sell sell like time, a few guys a we few things of this. apples we can't upgrade the breaker because we have no time <laughs> so we we end, now we're tearing them all out <laughs> we're, we're slowly like removing all of them because it's like if we want fruit we go to a market and we're like, hey, here's our extra veggies. Anybody want this to the other vendors? And they're like, sure, I'll take that. Do you want this flat of cherries? And we're like, sure, I'll take that. And, you know, life is just simpler that way. Yeah. We're you surrounded have your focus, by orchards. Right? We're surrounded. Yeah. Like, like no one grows vegetables. Everyone grows fruit. Yeah. So it's like. Behind us is a cherry orchard. Across the street is an apple orchard. Oh, you know what else is a funny story about animals? What? Tell about how like we <coughs> bought this place because you were watching. The... Oh, I was telling about how oh, okay. we were gonna get goats, but yeah. I, I didn't say about. Yeah. Yeah, I think it like the me wanting goats. I think I was watching like Weed 'em and Reap, and I was like, they're goats. Well, Willow. Oh yeah, Willow. Uh, was baby so cute. Willow, so cute. <laughs> how could you not want goats after watching Baby Willow? Oh, they are. But adorable. the good news. You get is, your goat picks. The good news is. We moved here and we started this farm and now I have no time to watch YouTube anymore. I never watch anyone else's videos any longer. And so now I'm no longer tempted by yep. all the cute goats tempted on YouTube. Tempted by the goats of another. Totally. No, no more temptation. Just, <laughs> just vegetables. All I see all day is vegetables. One of our neighbors is crazy about goats and has, I think, 50 of them in a similar size property if not smaller, and it seems excessive. <laughs> it's funny. Apparently, he doesn't like to, to sell them to anyone he thinks might eat them. <laughs> Which is hilarious, because he, like, has, like, what else are you going to do with, like, a male goat? And, and they're not, like, they're not milk goats. Yeah. Yeah. That's what goats are for. They're for eating. They're cute. But I understand. I don't eat them. I understand but... the, the difficulty, but. Yeah, like, I wouldn't want to give Fatty away. To someone who wanted to eat him <laughs> i think no he's only for snuggling so like yeah. economic barrier here right, let's see i don't know oh ah oh there what we are go. you doing i don't know oh, okay. i was just tapping things biggest economic barrier well it's the cost of the farm for yeah sure. for sure our place was like no one can afford to farm in this area unless they're like rich and then we got this place we were able to afford it like it was on the cheap end of all the properties in this you know this nice area because it has this super old farmhouse and everybody else wants these like modern mansion like you know crazy beautiful homes and then like our floors are like boo, hanging by a thread on the second floor you know like you could put marbles down in the same spot and watch them like roll away from each other. And, and so people were kind of like, eh, it's a nice place, but it's, and then we're like, we're weirdos. We don't care about the yeah, house. I was like, that's we're, nice. Look at all this open full sun land. Yeah. Like, like we specifically were looking for a place that had a short driveway. I was like, I don't want to deal with a driveway. I know how expensive driveways are. I'm not going to shovel this stupid thing. I'm like, I want it right on the busy road. 
we were like, oh, it's on a busy road. There's like so much traffic on this road. Amazing. Great farm stand potential. Mm -hmm. Whereas everyone else is like, oh, it's so loud. Oh. But, you know, I think about uh, when people are talking about starting farms, you know, it's like we had some, like we're, we're, I, I've been working in forestry for like almost 20 years now. So like I'm, I'm at an established point in my career and we had some like resources and stuff. So we were able to make this move, but it essentially like ate up all of our, our cash to like move to this place. And then other people in other situations, if you're thinking about starting a farm, there's like places where you can get land that's way cheaper yeah. than we us. We see like people talk about like down in the States, they're like, oh, farm with like heated greenhouse and like a house and established markets like for sale, 150,000. We were laughing. We saw one just the other day Yeah, um, and it was like, what? Yeah. Cause so our place cost 775. Yeah. Which is like, like what a deal, <laughs> what a deal we got. But, it, which but, is like Canadian, so yeah. that's like 35 cents American. <laughs> <laughs> but, but still, it's like the whole area here is like crazy expensive. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, there's like, a reason why. There's like, a reason. This this is a very unique region for Canada. This is the, like, arguably one of the nicest climates in Canada and arguably one of the most beautiful regions of Canada. It's kind of like the 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 playground of like Alberta and Yeah, there's lots of tourism and like Vancouver. So like there's lots of like domestic tourism. Vancouver got all rich cuz the real estate did that, you know, thing where it became a worldwide commodity and so people who owned, you know, they would be like he just works like a blue collar job and she's like a nurse or something like that, you know, like some traditional dynamic. And then their house that they bought in the eighties is now worth like $2 million or something like that. Right. And so then they have all of this like access to money and then, you know, and then they moved to Kelowna. Yeah. Which is why, why everything got so expensive here. Yeah. Somebody asked what I do in forestry. I run Chainsaw, and I have, uh, like, it, they made it really hard to get tickets for falling trees in Canada, because Canada's got, like, you know, like, lots of safety standards and stuff, so they they put in all these barriers to getting into it, um, and then nobody got into it for a long time, and then all the old timers kind of, like, moved past their prime. <laughs> And, and then all of a sudden there's nobody coming in to replace them. So there's like a big shortage of, of certified fallers for what I do. And then to find ones that are like a capable person who can go out there and produce, it's just, a, it's just a challenge. And then I've had a piece of forestry equipment as well. And I'd kind of like run chainsaw for people when I heard that they had lots of work for like the equipment. And then I try to get my machine in once they realized that I was like a like a responsible together person and that was kind of like my business strategy for a long time but i am selling the forestry equipment uh because for for a bunch of reasons uh one of them being that it was it's very uncomfortable cab and my back was just starting to kill me and i have like i i still have like okay hearing but i've been you know working in forestry for a long time Ian has hearing damage. Yeah, and he doesn't. He doesn't need to wear like, need to wear like ear. Yeah. Like, what are those? Hearing aids. He doesn't need like hearing aids, but he's not allowed to put music into videos. If you ever like watch a video and the music is like way too loud, that's because it like got got put out before I did like a like a sound listen because he he has issues with levels. So like early. The inside of my cab of my particular piece of equipment is very loud. And even with ear protection, it's, it's, you know, I was just like, what am I doing this for? Like I have a bunch of my body left still at the age of 40, but I really don't want to kind of wear through that, that part. I'm, I'm off warranty now. Right. <laughs> like it's, if it's one thing when you're under warranty, but when you're off warranty, then you got to start being careful with your stuff. So, uh, I just felt like it was a good time to, um, get, out of 
the <laughs> equipment, and I'm still going to run Chainsaw, which is still loud, but it's not as bad. We'll see. Yeah, and I probably won't even be running Chainsaw as much. I like money, so I like it when Ian goes to work and makes money, because then it means we don't have to make money here, which we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, we, we, have a, we have options. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so someone was asking what what's in the background here. We're in our greenhouse where that is our tomatoes and they're like going up a string. They're like trellised. And then this is eggplants. And then we got uh, hot peppers. So, and then we have the same thing on the other half of the greenhouse too. Yeah. And this is one of our two caterpillar tunnels. Yeah. The other one is like similar except it has more zucchinis instead of eggplants. Yeah, I have like zucchinis and basil yeah. and cucumbers and then we have a row of the tomatoes. Yeah. These are all cherry tomatoes. Or like a mix of different cherry tomatoes. And then the other one has our bigger tomatoes. We have tomatoes everywhere. I have many, many How many tomatoes did we plant this year? I have no idea. But probably this 300? Is a, this has a hundred. The other greenhouse has a hundred. I think there's 50 in the small greenhouse and then there's a couple beds there's a there. couple there's a couple beds which reminds me of things we need to put stakes in yeah that's a job that we need to do this week probably like 300 tomato plants yeah range. Or no probably more probably more like 350 yeah is my guess and then i have some more than we're going to be able to sell because one one thing about this oh, area little faith i have little Ian faith. has little faith i am going to have the best looking cherry tomatoes in the entire world. I apologize. <laughs> My cherry tomatoes are the best mix of colors. People are going to see them and they're going to be like, I grow cherry tomatoes, but I still need to buy these because they're so amazing. And I have Juliet and I bought these like, they look like Juliet, but they're fancy. People are going to freak out over our tomatoes. Yeah. I, I still don't know that people don't just want uh, like a basket of all the same color tomatoes if they just want they want l perfect looking little red tomatoes that taste good or they want orange sun gold because no, they know what they they're want, talking about obviously they want in a whole basket of sun gold but they can't have it because they don't want to pay for it people don't want to pay twice as much money for a basket of sun gold they'll be like oh that's too much money <laughs> so if they want sun gold they have to get a mix yeah that's how it works but i'm just saying that that's what like if you put that's that nice. out there, customer that's would nice. be like, you'd be like, that's yeah, what obviously, I want. obviously that's what they want, but they don't get that. People also want to buy peas. I get asked every day, do we have peas? No, we do not. Yeah. Because that is too much work. Yeah. That's just too much labor to pick them. I don't know. There was a whole bunch of stuff. I didn't read it there, but another one that I've seen people, they're asking about compost. So what do we do for compost? Well, right now we are buying our compost from a, a local supplier. They got like a peat mine or peat pit or whatever. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see. Cause, yeah, totally. It would be cool yeah. to see. Because it like grows back every year. Didn't they say? I don't know. I've, I've heard that they do, but I've yeah. also heard that they don't. And then they amend their, uh, their compost, which is like a beautiful consistency. That's like. So nice. Yeah. They it's amend like... it with, with a uh, 5% chicken manure. If we ask. If we ask. It's yeah. like an additive you can get on it. So that's what we've been doing. We are going to try to build our own compost system with the chickens. That's part of the idea, but it's another thing, right? So, no, we're not. That is not an idea at all. <laughs> because <laughs> the last... If, if we don't have time to take care of fruit trees, yeah. which like actually produce something of value, then there's no world that we have time for making <laughs> compost because it's just like there's actual skill to it also. oh yeah for sure like to get good compost it, the, like you need to know what you're doing you need and you need material you need compost, material yeah that's yeah. the that's the challenge is you need material yeah. to work with but we do have a great way of getting rid of all the the garden waste which is the chickens and yeah. they're, they're not going to make compost, but they're going to make manure. And like, that's, you know, that's, that's going to be compost. Oh, sorry. I don't know our, if that our is. kid's bedtime, our Betty by alarm was yeah. going off. My aspirational. <laughs> Seven o'clock. 
That was. I have an alarm for seven because when the school was going. Because so Leah just turned six, and Sam is three, and so she was in kindergarten this year before everything shut down because of COVID, um, and she had to go to bed at seven because she had to get up early. Yeah. But now they go to bed at like nine or ten o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> like we're. It's nice. It's a beautiful time of night now. Like we have big trees kind of over there, and the shade comes across the yeah. yard. Here, hold your arm up, like this. Okay. Like so, this is our property, and oh, like. It should be like that then. And then. <laughs> no. Okay, so this is our property, and our house is here, and we have some trees, and the sun comes up here, and it goes, and it's just sun, 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 until it's like, oh, it's about to dip behind. Yeah. The. The big London. The place. hill. It's like, oh, the sun will set in an hour, and then we get shade. Not down on the field. There's, like, sun on the field. But but at this point the in the day, the, the yard where the kids play is, like, fully shaded, and it's cool, and it's nice, and we got a bunch of stuff up there for them to do. So it's kind of nice to let them just be outside and not worry about sun exposure for, like... Yes, this is the one time when they will not get yelled at for, Where's your hat? Put your hat on! Put yeah. Put your clothes back on! Yeah. We're all allowed to be no hats. Except for I still wear a hat. Because I need all the... All the protection. All the protection I can get. But uh, it, it kind of, like, we're already night owls. But then that just kind of seals the deal. It's like, in the morning, if the kids are outside, like, if the kids are out at, like, 9 a.m., then it's just the whole yard is just getting bombarded with, you know, this intense sunlight. Yeah, we don't get any sort of shade, at, like, until about 1. 1 is yeah. the earliest point for shade. So, so if, if it's, like, a really sunny day, I, I try to just give them stuff to do inside for a while. Until... Yeah, we let them, like, watch shows in the morning. Every, every day is a Saturday morning. Ian wakes up and <laughs> makes us pancakes, which is amazing. I have pancakes every day. <laughs> and coffee. <laughs> and coffee. And then we, like, hang out... And, like, the kids, like, have their pancakes and, like, watch their cartoons. So, it's pretty good. Yep. And then around noon, we get to work. <laughs> and then we work until... And then we work until... We, we pass to, out. Yeah, until we go to bed. <laughs> we got a, another cat coming. Bo. Come here. Yeah, okay, so how much compost did we buy? We bought... 40 how they weren't 45 40, right? yards no there's more than that this year i thought the first one was 24 and the second one maybe maybe we bought 48 yeah so this year we bought 48 we bought two dump trucks full of compost is what we brought in because the first one we spread onto the farm we actually got them to dump it straight onto the farm um, and then we spread that and then we were all like, oh my God, COVID. So we instantly bought a second one, which we tarped to be able to, like, we still yes. have half of that to be able, cause every time we kind of flip a bed, we put down a fresh layer of compost. Um, and then what, what was the price on it? It was 50 bucks. It was, was $1,200 for each load. Yeah. So a thousand dollars for the material for the, and then 200, and then for, the 200 delivery. for the delivery so yeah. with delivery it was 50 dollars a yard yeah so not cheap but not expensive but to, like, for our area like in our area so our our dump like the i don't know is that is that a universal word the yeah. dump <laughs> the landfill that's the word i'm looking for <laughs> <laughs> the proper English term, the landfill, uh, they make compost with everyone's like yard waste. Um, but it's always full of garbage. It's like, it's full of plastic garbage because everyone's, everyone doesn't care when they bring their, their yard waste in. So it's just, there's plastic bags and there's sp stickers from like fruit and vegetables. Yeah. And like maybe needles. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty it's not ideal um and so we we try we wanted to get something that wasn't going to be full of plastic garbage so we went for for this 
the stuff because we could have gotten I think they sell it like you can get it for like 35 a yard when you're buying it by the dump truck yeah but then you'd have to also get delivery still so we probably could have saved like ten dollars a yard if we wanted to dig plastic out of our garden for the rest of our lives which we didn't <laughs> yep yeah seaweed amazing I wish we were near the coast for sure we'd be like yeah well like... <coughs> i think we will in the future what do some seaweed and stuff the only way it makes sense is to you buy... do it as like a spray right yeah you buy like seaweed like kelp and fish fertilizers like like organic yeah. fertilizers um which you know those those are amazing but then i'd have to spray we're no spray. We're no spray. No sprays of any kind. <laughs> yeah, which is true because we we don't we don't fertilize. Yeah, we just use the compost. We or, or the soil. Well, we do use fertilizer. Yeah, but we don't because that's another question people ask us all the time, which is like, oh, like how do you fertilize like your plants like throughout the season? And the answer is we don't. There's just it's compost and like you know fertilizer in the beginning when we set up the beds and stuff gets planted into there and if like the tomatoes if they're all like oh it's not enough like i don't care you're a bunch of whiners i'm gonna hack you down like yeah. you produce me tomatoes i'm gonna kill you and then th then it's fine yeah then they get in line yeah then they get, then they listen they <laughs> listen to what's up um long term probably i would like to get um a system for fertilizing things like the tomatoes yeah um because we probably could get a little bit more production um by doing like a mid-season fertilize yeah but I, I think we're more limited right now you know like if a tomato plant could produce an extra 20 percent more it's not like we're gonna that's just like 20 percent more that might rot yeah it's like <laughs> we're, we we're gonna be so like so tight on time just to be able to get everything harvested yeah where that... we're at we need to build our sales more than we need to build yeah. our our like production um, we, we always our... say can you grow it and can you sell it and it's kind of like these two limiting factors that are constantly kind of switching back and forth you know yeah kinda... there's there's always there's always like hiccups like we have no radishes right now and everyone keeps asking about radishes mm -hmm. and I'm worried that I'm gonna all my lettuce right now needs to get picked for yeah. this week we're not gonna have lettuce for a so while. I need I need the lettuce because it's it's getting to the point that it's not gonna be good so anything that's there past like Sunday probably I'm should just go up. um but my lettuce that i have planted is like meh, they're like tiny they're and i'm like growing. yeah and i'm like i don't we're know getting into the heat of the summer soon yeah i just i don't know that they're going to be ready in a week and a half to sell but like i know they'll be ready in two and a half weeks um but it would be a really big bummer to not have lettuce for a week that would be like a pretty serious like pretty serious <laughs> oops we didn't put any lettuce in the ground oh oops that thing that like the reason why you buy stuff yeah. from us the thing you love more than anything uh we do have cucumbers i just got them in late the cucumbers probably we've also the weather has been like crazy this year it's been really cold um i was like last year our flowers were really late because we planted them like end of june or something we were so behind on planting yeah <laughs> um but by this time i was picking like buckets of zinnias and i have like one zinnia right now and and i did way better on like timing for getting the stuff planted so that's just the cold weather um same like the tomatoes are way behind like peppers are behind zucchinis are are slow from the lack of heat yeah and then so the cucumbers got planted late and then <clears throat> then they're they're having issues because of the the cold weather which i don't know it's not like it was like 25 be... today like that's that's not we're usually into like 30 yeah and and no clouds in the sky like 
30 and clear sky, just straight up sun. Yeah. Like perfect summer weather, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. Like he... We usually get like 30 and sunny. No humidity. For like all of July, all of August, and like most of September. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. People complaining about the heat on the East Coast. It's like, yeah. It's like the swamp. I don't want your hum- humidity. <laughs> I'm I'm happy with here. I, Ian's from Ontario. Yeah. So we've been there. But I have to say, people are always, they always say like the Humidex number, right? And I'm like, it's it's 44 outside. And then I go outside, I'm like, it's not 44. Like, you guys are 24 on track. And, and then 44 with the Humidex. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, and then I look at the weather and I'm like, oh no, it's just, it feels as unpleasant as 44 would feel if it was dry. Yeah, but with the Humidex, what like what was the actual temperature? It's probably still hot for forty four, but it's probably like thirty seven or something. And thirty like I've experienced forty four. That is like like you breathe and your lungs burn. Yeah, like forty four is like crazy. I've I've experienced minus forty four. You've experienced forty four too, because we've experienced it together. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I I'll take forty. Well, I don't know. I guess if I'm inside, I don't care if I have to deal with one. But maybe I'd take 44 over minus 44 if I had to be outside in it. Even with all the layers of minus 44, I'd still take all the water of needing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take heat any day. Oh, we have a bow. Look, we have two cats. All of our cats are coming to hang out with us. Well. Should we wrap it up? Was there any other questions? Have you been reading at all? Yep. But for a while there, my eyes were having a problem with the yeah the, seeing the screen with like the sun. I definitely, I definitely missed. Forty four is one hundred and eleven Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're Canadian, right? We're, our bodies aren't set up for that. I don't think it. What's no one's body set up for forty four? That's like go to the hospital. You do get adju- you like a fever. You get adjusted to weather. You do on some level. But I thought over over like once you get into fever temperatures, then it's there's only so dangerous. much your, your body can adjust. Yeah, because yeah. your body is like I can't sweat enough to keep myself from like, yeah hurting my organs. But forty four, you probably still could forty four. It's probably like once you get in the high 40s that it's like there's nothing you can do yeah other than die you just die that's all that happens <laughs> okay well it's fun hanging out, out with you guys but we gotta get back to work yep all right. i can hear <laughs> i can hear our kids calling for us yeah i, I just heard sam it begins <laughs> again yep thanks for all the compliments yeah. we gladly accept them <laughs> they sustain us <laughs> do we ever go on vacation we are on vacation we just like took look like, this video is saying it's an hour and 13 minutes yep. it took us like 10 minutes to get ready for that sitting down it's like solid vacation we like took the weekend off we took like sunday monday off and, like that was good yep yeah sometimes we go to the lake we live in like a five minute drive of three different beautiful lakes and on occasion, we go there a couple times a year. Serena says we should do it every week. I think we should do it every week. I think it I should be think a Thursday thing. Happen. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but yeah, but it should happen. All okay. right. Oh. Press the button. Okay. Right. Yeah. See you guys. Okay. Bye.